Hi everyone, welcome to D4 Drupal channel. Today we are going to see about how to create your own custom plugin type in Drupal. So in previous video, I already explained theoretical uh, view of plugin and today we are going to see about how you can write your own uh, plugin in Drupal 10. Okay, so first, as I already mentioned, you have plugin manager class. This is the class which we will be creating under the SRC folder. So I already created that. So I will show you that file. So this is the plugin manager class. And here, and it will extend default plugin manager. Extends default plugin manager. It extending. So these are ca cache, backend interface, and module handler interface. Those two namespace you have to add to pass constructor for parent. Uh, class okay so here we are passing and then next uh, as i already mentioned it holds path of plugin folder annotation folder and interface path so here you can see this is the uh, plugin folder so where you are going to create all the plugin file when it come to plugin block so it will be under plugin block or if it is field type plugin field type or plugin uh, field formatter field widget like that so in my scenario i created the folder called block data to hold all the uh, plugin file in my scenario okay and next what i'm going to do here next i'm passing the interface file for my plugin so where i'm going to create i'm going to create under the src plugin block data in this i'm going to create the interface file this interface file holds all the plugin specific function so interface holds all the plugin specific function and then next annotation class so we have to tell to the manager annotation class and this annotation class holds all the variable which you are going to uh, use when you initialize the plugin so like at block means you will be giving value for id label description like all those types of variables you have to define in the annotation okay and then uh, that's it so by giving all this Plugin manager easily initialize object for it. And by using this parameter, it can easily discover all the plugin files or wherever we are having, whether it's a contract module or custom module or core. So by using this path, it will easily find out all the plugin file and it will give you the output. Okay. And that's it. Um, that's it about the plugin manager file. And annotation, as I already mentioned, it holds all the variable. When you go to my annotation file, here you can see I have only label. So ID is default variable. You don't need to mention. I just given only label file. And this extend the plugin class from the code. So you have to extend this plugin class for annotation file. And the next one is interface. So interface, interface is under plugin block data interface file. And here I have that. Um, class sorry interface in this interface i have function of label which return the label whatever the user is specifying in the annotation and then next one is block data where we are going to do actual functionality in this plugin okay so two files we are having here two functions we are having here and that's it about the interface file yeah so we create a plugin manager annotation interface and next as I already mentioned, plugin manager is act as a service. So you have to create a service file where you have to mention your plugin data manager uh, file in your services.yml. By using this name, you can fetch your plugin and you can do the definition and uh, you can discover all the plugin file and you can do your uh, functionality. By default, it's recommended to use uh, plugin manager name as plugin.manager.com the name whatever you want but you can give any name here it's not mandatory you have to give in this name plugin.manager you can give any but it's recommended to use in this naming format okay and that's it service.oml is over annotation over interface over next plugin file so this is the plugin file where we are going to handle all the functionality whatever we want before going to plugin file I will show you how this is working in my site. Then we will go there and we will see so that you can understand it easily. Okay. So next in the block layout, if you go there. 
instead of full width, I created two blocks. So these two blocks are plugin demo, which I created. Okay. And I configure it. Here I'm giving any title. And this is the plugin which I'm selecting. These two plugin I created. Okay. So this is the plugin which I created. And this is also which I created. If I give, if I select any one plugin, if I save, so you can see here one plugin displaying uh, date and time, one plugin displaying the welcome message in the site. Okay. So here, if you go there, so you can see those two plugins are already added to that hero full width region. And that's it. This is how it is working. So you can ask me a question. When you configure, it's just a select option, right? So we can have a static select element in your uh, block form. And based upon the selection, you can add if else condition or switch case, whatever you want, you can add. You can ask me this question, but why you have to go with plugin is that consider this is a uh, model which is contributed or it's from a core. And if you are going to, if your client is asking to add new feature to this select list, what do you have to do? You have to do form alter or you have to do something like extending the class or something you have to do like hard coding the functionality. But if it is a plugin, you can create your own plugin in your custom module. So once it is created, automatically those plugins will be listed out here. So whatever you are selecting, based upon that, the output will be displayed in your front end. So that's the reason we have to go with plugin. Uh, if you if you're facing difficult to understand, just think about the uh, field widget field formatter. So whatever widget you are selecting for field, the widget will be displaying in the node add or edit page or formatter. Whatever you are uh, selecting, the data will be displaying in the front end as you selected. The same way, the plugin uh, block which I created here, it will work here, and I will show you the code. So when you go to the code. What I have done, I just created a, a plugin block data. So this is the plugin block data, which I created. The class name, whatever you are mentioning, so block data class. So you have to mention the same name here and ID for your plugin, whatever ID you want to give, you can give this. And then next is the label, some label for your uh, plugin block so that you plugin block data so that when you select it in the interface or if you are using somewhere, end user can you easily uh, read it and they can, site builder can easily read it out and they can configure it if they want. And then next, I just created a class and it extends the plugin place and then it implement the block data interface, implements block data interface because block data interface holds the, uh, this public specific function which you are going to uh, create in your block block data file block data plugin file that's why we are extending this interface and then here interface has label and block data function both functions are created and here in the label i'm just returning the plugin definition label so this is the plugin definition label this will be returned here and then block data here what i'm uh, returning i am returning the current date so since i created this for date and time so i'm just returning it here i'm not using dependency injection uh but it's recommended to use dependency injection here so just change it uh, with dependency injection okay and then that's it i'm just uh, uh, formatting the date and time in this format i'm just displaying it as a markup and next one is welcome message here you can see it's a static text the same way how I created date and time block data plugin, the same way I created here. And here I'm just returning hi, just welcome message. Okay. And that's it. Here we created two plugin block. Then this is fine. And next, what you have to do, you have to create a blog and where you are going to uh, select this plugin. And based upon the selection, the block data function will be called and that will be displayed. If you don't know how to create your own custom blog, go check the video which I already posted. Uh, watch that and then come here so that you can have a better understanding of how it is working. Here in block file, what I have done, so these are all already you people know. If you don't know, go and watch the previous video. Construct function, create function. So in construct function, create function, I'm just 
uh, adding only one extra argument that is plugin manager block data, which I'm going to use in my block file. And then here I'm just initializing variable for my manager file. And next build function. So build function where you are going to actually write the uh, render data of block. Okay. So here it is. So I will come to this at the end. So default configuration. For, by default configuration, I'm just giving empty for plugin list. And next is block type, block form. Here I'm going to give an option of select, select element and then select plugin. Here I'm going to call, list all the uh, plugin options. So here you can see the plugin manager, uh, which I created, block data manager file getting all the definitions. This get definition function find out all the plugins whatever present inside the SRC plugin block data folder. All the files will be fetched with this function and then uh, it will come as an array. So plugin ID and then definition of it. What I'm doing, I'm creating option. This option plugin ID will be act as a key and then label will be the uh the value for the key element okay and then i'm creating options and i'm giving that as the options here so let me configure new block let me remove these two So I removed them when I refresh. It doesn't have any block here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to here, hero full width. And here I'm going to select uh, the custom block data. So it's a custom block data, which we gave here. Custom block data. I'm just selecting it. So this is the block form here you can see all the plugins are getting listed out i'm just selecting display date and time i'm giving date here and save so when you go to this path you can see the date is getting displayed and that is how it works so all the plugins will be listed out with this option on submission, I'm just saving the configuration, whatever the user is selected. And next, where well, you have to go to the build function. So where the block data actually getting rendered. Here, I'm just getting the default value, what the user is selected from the configuration. And then in the plugin uh, block data manager, I am creating an instance, which means I'm initializing an object. As I already mentioned, Initialize object for each object. So here it will initialize the object for your plugin. From that plugin means uh, consider if it is a date and time plugin, it will go, it will initialize object for this. And here it will call this function, which is block data. Block data will be called whatever block data uh, function is returning, that will be displayed in the front end. Okay. So this is how the uh, block is working here. And let me select one more custom block data and we will select the message and I go there. So you can see the welcome message is also getting rendered. And that's it. If you want to add one more to this, you don't need to touch this module. You can create one custom module and just only this file is enough. So the, only this file. You just need to create a namespace, use whatever the class, and then this initialization annotation and these two function. This is fair enough to create new option and that will be rendered dynamically in your site. And that's it about today's video. If you like the video, please share, like, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye.